Hello, all you beautiful weirdos. How's everyone doing today? Great, love to hear it. <laughs> With season 18 right around the corner, we have so much to look forward to. Things like a complete subclass rework, possible exotic weapon and armor changes to fit the arc narrative, some new exotics, and maybe, just maybe, they'll finally buff the crap out of the super itself. Are you excited? I'm excited. So today, I thought it'd be fun to cover some forgotten about exotics and mods that I think are going to be worth keeping an eye on next season. I want to clarify, this isn't another get these now or must have videos, I'm not trying to spread FOMO. This is more of a keep an eye on Ada and Zer over the next few weeks type of situation. Because Bungie made it clear that we won't see the new subclass until it's actually released, which is both sad and intriguing at the same time, but I'm okay with that. If we look back at the Void and Solar rework, each subclass kept the core of the old one for the most part, with a few extra twists. Bungie added in keywords like Radiant, Cure, or Volatile. I think with Ark, we're going to see a focus around melees, mobility, chain lightning, and maybe even some blinding or disorienting effects on the subclass itself. Same thing with the artifact. The whole thing each season is focused around some very powerful mods that are specifically tied to whatever subclass is the new hot. Think Classy Restoration or Volatile Flow. Based on that alone, Season 18 could bring some thunder. That, uh, that, that was a bad joke. Who writes this crap? Moving on. <laughs> Back in April, Bungie announced they were buffing heavy machine guns by 40% and 20% against bosses. Those changes took effect this season, and it brought one of my old favorites back to life, the Thunderlord. This thing is all about raining hate from above, and it's no joke when it comes to clearing rooms and eating through champions. It has two perks that I think are going to make it a very angry weapon in Season 18. Lightning rounds cause the weapon to fire faster and more accurately the longer we hold the trigger down, and when we start unloading on a champion or a boss, it creates lightning strikes that do even more damage. The intrinsic trait is Rain Havoc. Kills with this weapon generate lightning strikes from above, and this is the perk that clears whole rooms in seconds. Have you ever seen the Thunderlord amped up on Font of Might? If not, you should really check it out. This gun chews through everything, and when paired with the Actium War Rig, it becomes somewhat glorious. Fun little fact, the lightning strikes can create elemental wells from Explosive Well Maker. They don't drop as consistently as something like a rocket launcher, but they can still make for some interesting hybrid solar and arc builds. Keep that in mind when the new season rolls around. Another heavy weapon that'll make for some great chain lightning fun is the Anarchy. This thing is fantastic at locking down doorways, keeping champions in check, or doing some extra DPS in the form of tick damage on a boss while we shoot them with something else. The arc traps are great for those situations when we need to block off a path and forget about it for a bit so we can focus on some other ads. And if the new subclass has anything to do with chain lightning like I think it will, the anarchy might be a beast. Those little arc traps it creates sticks to anything, including our teammates. For the longest, I had a problem with sticking a, uh, well, I'll let you call it what you want for the sake of not being nasty, to my friends' heads. But you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I have a feeling this weapon is going to shine next season, or at least be used a lot more. The Anarchy can be picked up from the kiosk in the tower. Unfortunately, it requires a lot of raid farming for spoils to get it, so please, be cautious and wait until the season arrives before spending all your hard-earned currency. And while we're on the subject of Chain Lightning, there's one more weapon that stands out to me, the Risk Runner. I know this is more of a commonly used weapon, but with the upcoming changes, we should really keep an eye on it, because I have a feeling this one is going to make for some spicy gameplay in PvE and PvP. Any arc damage we take activates arc conductor and superconductor at the same time, which gives us a 10% damage bonus, plus 100 handling, reduces incoming arc damage by 50%, and gives a bottomless magazine. I repeat, all this comes from just taking arc damage. We all know the Ark subclass is going to be meta next season, because the same thing happened with Void and Solar, so taking a 50% damage reduction from all the Ark throwing at us in PvP will come in very handy. Another great thing about the Risk Runner, we can throw an Ark Pulse Grenade at our feet and activate Ark Conductor, and since we know Bungie is giving all grenades to all classes of Guardians now, this means we can all do it. If I remember correctly, this gun can be picked up from doing the intro missions, so it should be available to everyone. If I'm wrong, please correct me so I can post it in the comments section. Okay, let's talk about some armor. Storm Dancer's Brace is one of those exotics that got put in the vault and left to rot. When it first came out, it was kinda lackluster, but then it got a rework a long time ago, which made it a great exotic. The problem was, 
Nobody really liked the Stormcaller Super, so it stayed in the vault. But I have a feeling players are going to start looking at this exotic like one of Amanda Holiday's butt cheeks when our 3.0 rolls around. Ascending Amplitude increases the damage of the super by 10% for every stack we have. It also refunds up to 50% of our super energy based on how many kills we get. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this will be a boss melting godly exotic, but I will say it's already top tier at ad clearing even in endgame activities. I use this one quite a bit and it eats through ads in some of the hardest content in the game. And if Ark gets the royal treatment as Void and Solar did, we could see this exotic become a go to next season. I made a build using Storm Dancer's Brace last season. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. And maybe I'll learn how to use that thing that pops up in the corner finally. But uh, don't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> this next one was a hard decision. On one hand, we have an exotic that is or was disabled, I don't even know anymore. And on the other hand, we have an exotic that fits my melees being crazy next season theory. We're talking about Blight Ranger and Liar's Handshake. I couldn't decide, so instead, I gave a brief rundown on both of them. Blight Ranger causes the projectiles we reflect from the Arc Staff to deal 650% more damage and create orbs of power for our team. Sounds awesome, right? It's really not that good, but hear me out on this one. Bungie is always two steps ahead when it comes to some things, like creating an exotic that turns out to be a game changer. Think Loralee Splendor that just so happens to fit perfectly with the Solar subclass. What if that's the case with the Blight Ranger? We don't exactly know what this arc rework is going to involve, but it could make this exotic a must-have in something like a raid next season. Or maybe they'll completely rework it to play a bigger role. So this one made the list because I recommend keeping an eye on it. And the other exotic, Liar's Handshake, is one of those exotics that does get used more frequently, but if I'm right about the melee thing, this could become broken in PvE. It already does 200% more melee damage when cross counter is active and heals us on melee hits. So if the arc rework does have some stupid aspects and fragments based around melees, we might see a new titan one hit boss kill scenario here. Either one of these exotics becoming meta would be fantastic because, let's be real here, hunters have needed some arc love for a long time. Nobody cares about their stripper pole dancing in PvE. Just saying. The last thing we're going to talk about just so happens to fit in with Liar's Handshake and Storm Dancer's Brace. Almost perfectly, actually. There are a few mods that might be worth keeping an eye on. Well of Striking, Well of Ions, and Elemental Light. Well of Striking is a stackable mod that gives up to 20% melee energy back depending on how many times we stack the mod. Well of Ions amps up our melee damage by 30% for 11 seconds at base. And Elemental Light drops Elemental Wells everywhere when we kill adds with our super. This one goes with Stormcaller and all the Chain Lightning. If you don't have these, check Ada every day. She resets at 1pm Eastern. We also have multiple websites that tell what she's selling. We're now at that awkward part of the video that I'm terrible at. The ending. <laughs> there are so many items I wanted to put on this list, but the video would end up being 30 minutes long. So I had to cut it down. It was a rough decision, but I had to do it. I can almost guarantee exotics like Caress of the Falling Star, Trinity Ghoul, Salvager Salvo, and so many others are going to be awesome next season. I can't wait to dig in and see what dumb builds we can make together. Let me know what exotics you're looking forward to in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, a like would be awesome. But more importantly, be true to yourself, be good to one another, and have a fantastic day. Thank you! me and you won't get any older do crack your hold or two oh. heating up inside of me blood so violently thanks for trying me right. now it's finally time to see how